So let's bring in Hollywood divorce attorney David Glass for more on this. David, people going through divorces are going through some of the hardest times of their lives, and a lot of what they're going through is emotional. And in any divorce, there's a huge sense of loss, and the loss of relationship, of money, some friends. Welcome to another episode of the Hourglass Podcast, where family law and psychology intersect. Today, we continue with our look at how music impacts a person when they're going through a divorce or a breakup. We're fortunate to have with us veteran singer, songwriter, session and touring musician, Terry Illus. Terry has been in the music business for more than 40 plus years. He's been the front man for the well-known band XYZ, and he was with the Great White Band for more than nine years. Throughout his musical career, he has sold millions of records and today continues to write and tour. In fact, He's toured with Ozzy Osbourne, Foreigner, Soundgarden, Ted Nugent, Alice Cooper, and many others. As a session singer, Terry has worked with David Bowie, Mariah Carey, Stevie Wonder, Rod Stewart, Guns N' Roses, ACDC, and too many others to count. It's an absolute honor to have Terry with us. So without further ado, Terry Elouse. Hey, Terry, what a pleasure it is to have you with us on the Hourglass podcast today. Thank you as well. Thank you so much. Where are you? Uh, I understand you're on tour and you're traveling. What city are you in right now? Last night I was in Nashville. Uh, right now I'm in uh, Miami and I'm leaving uh, tomorrow morning to go um, on the cruise. I have a contract with a company called Royal Caribbean and um I have a one-year contract with them to uh, to be a headliner on their uh, biggest ship, the uh, um, the icon of the seas. So I'm um, I mean myself and the band, of course. When I say I am, you know, the band as well. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and we have a contract for one year, and we perform as a headliner. We uh, we perform our own songs and songs we have uh, been involved with either. Uh, uh, touring with the original band, or so it's it's a lot of fun. It's a big show. It's a lot of fun. It's great. And uh, I mean, is the uh, is the are the words from the Bon Jovi uh, song true that you you know the the name of the city by the bottle that you drink? Is uh, is is that how you tell where you are? Well, I don't drink, so I don't know about that. <laughs> but but, but uh, yes, basically, uh, um, the last few nights, next the night before Nashville, I was in. Uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and then the night before I was in uh, Chattanooga, and and then I was in LA. I mean, it's just yes, it it gets confusing. Uh, sure. What happens to me? The funny thing, David, is I go to an airport, and the lady would say, "So where are you where are you heading today?" I'm like, I have no idea. So I'm <laughs> I said, uh, "Here's my name. Just look." And she's <laughs> like, and sometimes people think I'm strange because they're like you don't know where you're going. I'm like. I do, but I travel so much, lady. Please help me. Here's my. Oh yeah, here it is. It says uh, Boston. Oh okay, you know. Yeah, wow. Sometimes I'm uh, I'm kidding, but I'm not. We're traveling so much, and uh, I mean, I sh of course, I should pay attention. But I have uh, I have ADD, and I have uh, what you call uh, 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 other issues, and uh, uh, you know, a little bit of autism as well. So I'm uh, sometimes I forget things, and uh, you know. Sure. Yeah, as long as long as you have people planning it and, and you get to where you got to go, it, it doesn't really matter how you get there, I guess. Yeah, we usually we usually have uh, we're usually two or three traveling together. So it's easier. So we know where we're going and uh, I can rely on my tour manager. Uh, um, you know, it's just because the truth is it's because we, we get really tired. It's not so much. Uh, 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 I mean, of course, the fact that we travel a lot uh but it's really the fact that we we are tired, we don't sleep much. You know, uh, the lack of sleep really uh, affects your 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 thinking. Sure, sure. Now, so on the Hourglass podcast this season, we've been exploring music and, and the effect on the human psyche, especially during a breakup. Um, and, and in my opinion, uh, as a as a former psychologist and as a, a family law attorney, I think music can play a big part of getting through tough times. What's your, been your experience in terms of your own ability to get through tough times and, and how you used music? Well, music can be a healer in a way that um, really, 
music can take you to a certain a, a, a space uh, in your head. You know, uh, you think about music and and you, th you think about a song. It reminds you of a certain person, reminds you of a place where you you, you have been before. Um, music is definitely a healer uh, um, for a lot of people, for myself. Uh, um, music creates emotions. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's, it's it, they've done the research on that. Um, a certain type of music can uh, transport you to a, a, a good spot or a bad spot. Mm -hmm. uh, people that listen to uh, really harsh, uh, heavy metal, dark um, uh, music, I, I have a tendency to be much more aggressive in general mm -hmm. uh, than the people uh, from the 60s who listen to uh, the flower music and, and <laughs> smoked weed. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Uh, so music is definitely... Um, uh, a transport, I would say, you know, it, it takes you somewhere and um, helps you through good times and bad times. I mean, uh, I, I've talked to to many people who come to me and said, thank you so much for writing that song. Um, I, I was able to go through hard times because of that song. And it touches me all the time because I, I as a songwriter, I'm like, wow, this is this is pretty deep, you know, uh, but uh in fact, someone said that to me last night. Someone said, oh, that song that you wrote, you know, uh, meant so much for me. And, and I'm, I'm okay. You know, I mean, I appreciate that. But I have also uh, approached other songwriters, mm -hmm. so, uh, myself, other uh, well-known performers, and told them how I felt about a certain song. Um, uh, in, in fact, as a singer, when you sing a song, you get emotional. Uh, yeah. Well, as a listener, you get emotional as well. We get the same, we share the same emotion, you know, tears. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to sing, you know, and it's hard to listen for you, you know, you know. Right. What was the, uh, what was the song that the person that the, uh, the person spoke to you about the other night that, that they appreciated you for writing it? It's a song called um, When I Find Love. It's a song I wrote, I co-wrote uh, in the, in the nineties, uh, When I Find Love. Uh, it says, when I find love, let it be you. Um, uh, it's a beautiful line. I mean, if you if you if you're able to find love, um, and uh, and let it be you, meaning that person that's in front of you, uh, it, it's 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 amazing. You know, love is everywhere, and yet it's nowhere to be found. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say nowhere to be found, but it's not it's not something you find just like that. So uh, yeah. we all go through hard times, good times, and. Uh, going through through life with a loved ones is is a wonderful thing you know you know yeah now have you ever had a, a song with a past girlfriend uh, that was your song you're you're two you're the two of you had a song you, you go through a breakup can you listen to that song if it comes on the radio or it's uh or, or it's on the stereo yeah of course i wrote a song for my first wife mm -hmm. uh, jennifer uh, that was released on my first album. Uh, the song did very well. It was on MTV and uh, so it's called "What Keeps Me Loving You." Because um, uh, we used to fight so much, but we used to reconnect all the time. And uh, every uh, I used to, I, I wrote every time I walk away, I can't be free. Tell me why I never stay where I belong, uh, because there was a conflict when you're twenty something years old. Uh, you're going through a conflict where you're asking yourself, well. Is the ask green the the the, the green um, the, the 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 what's the expression um, is this is it greener on the other side? Right. So you're you're twenty something, you know, you're tempted, and of course, so that's what I, I wrote the song about. And uh, and then I, I look around and I come back and said, how come I never how come I never I, I never stay where I belong, which is with you. Right. Uh, then you ask yourself as well the same question: Is it really? Should I really stay with you? It's a conflict, you know. It's an eternal conflict. Mm -hmm. Some people have more of a conflict than others, um, and those are the lucky ones. I, I always believe that some people find a person and they know it's the right one, and they don't look around and it's it. This is it forever. My parents were like that. They were married for almost sixty years, right. which is fantastic. My grandparents the same way. Well, I've always had a problem with that, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> uh, and uh, I've always asked myself, is she the right one? Is she the right one? Well, she is. No, she's not. It's a terrible conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's terrible for, the, for, for, for myself and also terrible for the other person as well. 
um, eventually, um, eventually, when you really put your mind into it and you you grow, <laughs> you have to grow up. Eventually, you realize that the person in front of you is the right person. Mm -hmm. Right, right. There's a. Uh, I mean, I've uh, I have two adult daughters and then two younger boys, and I've told the daughters they're not allowed to get married until they turn thirty. <laughs> Um, they're, they're both dating people right now. And, and I don't, I can't control how they, how things move, but I know myself when I was in my twenties and getting married, uh, I, I had too many doubts just the way you explained it just right there. Yes. Um, finding, I mean, again, again, David, for some people it's love, it, love comes easy. It's really easy. They find a person and that's it. And God bless them. I mean, I really, to be honest with you, I, I envy them, actually, because I've always had a conflict. Uh, I, I love someone, I'm, I meet someone, I like the person, and all of a sudden, I am uh, uh, I look around and I'm like, you know, uh, I think I'm the best boyfriend, but the worst husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So, but as you get older, as I get older, I was able to, to, um, uh, to to get better at it and spend more time with the right people. Yeah. That's that, that's a good thing, you know. I think it came with, to be honest with you, when my daughter came in the picture, um, I realized what true love was all about. When when uh, my ex wife and I, I mean, she's not my ex yet, but we're going through eventually a divorce. But we've been separated for seven years now. Um, when her and I adopted a child uh, seventeen years ago. Uh, it changed everything for me. Uh, all of a sudden, I realized what love was. Before I could, I, for some reasons, I mean, I didn't realize what love was, even if love was next to me. But when I saw my daughter, you know, her eyes and and her fragility and everything, um, I, I I I realized what love was. You know, so that I think I think having a kid changes a person quite a lot. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that you've been separated for something like seven years. Yeah. How, do, how have you managed to co-parent, to continue to be parents to your daughter while not being a couple? Um, I met my wife, my current wife, uh, when I went to high school. I went to high school with her. She mm -hmm. was my, my first love. I was our first love. Um, and we... Um, we were together for a while. Um, she became a, a famous model in in Europe. Uh, I came to the United States to try a career, and I was able, thank God, to succeed. And eventually, uh, she was in, in France. We did not reconnect for many, many years. And then eventually, she broke up with her boyfriend, and I broke up with my wife. So I, I said, you know, maybe she was the one. So I called her, and... And she came back to the States, stayed with me, and uh, we stayed together for many years. And then we realized that we were no longer the kids, you know, yeah, yeah. and time had passed. And uh, But we still love each other. And uh, how we managed to co-parent, you know, I think we, I think friendship, I think friendship plays a big part of, of, of the equation in, in a marriage. Um your your spouse has to be your, your best friend first. Uh, someone you want to have dinner with, someone you want to talk to about your your day, someone you want to share things uh, with. I think it starts with friendship. Uh, that's what happened with her. Her and I were, were best friends. I was chasing her for six months, and she told me, no, no, no. <laughs> so oh. so uh, I think friendship does play a big part in a marriage. And, um, and also common sense. I mean... Um, when you have a child, you you realize that um, she becomes she or he becomes number one, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the bottom line. Um, so you know what you have to do to make that child happy, and uh, you realize that okay, mommy and daddy are not going to be together. Mm -hmm. However, we will do what we can to to be um, to be civil and to be more than civil because my ex and I we. We go to dinner sometimes. I, we, we, my daughter just graduated two weeks ago. I, I took my uh, daughter to and my daughter and my ex to dinner. Mm -hmm. um, we, I'm, 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 I'm there emotionally and financially all the time. She doesn't have to ask. Uh, there's no 
I realized that I don't, we don't need attorneys or anything like it. We, we have a different understanding. I, maybe because we're French, mm -hmm. I don't know, or European, um, we, we don't want to argue. We don't want to fight. You know, I don't want to fight with her. Or, um, and maybe it has something to do with our personality. Um, uh, she's a very alpha female. I'm a very alpha male, but I had tendency to let go, let go. I become passive aggressive, mm -hmm. and then I'm really upset. Yeah. So I learned. She learned how to deal with me, and I learned how to deal with her. Mm -hmm. And I think we will always be there for each other till till the end. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But we realized that you know we're we're not twenty anymore, and we have to be with somebody else, and that's 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 life. Yeah, yeah. Now, how have you, as a songwriter, have you used personal experiences getting through tough times uh, to influence you into writing a song? All the time. Okay. For example, and the first song uh, I mentioned, what, uh, what Keeps Me Loving You, was about my first wife, uh, right. Jennifer. Uh, she knows that was her song. Um, I had a, 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 another song called Maggie on my first album. There was a song that I wrote when my first wife and I went different ways, I dated, I dated somebody else um, mm -hmm. named Patty. And I loved Patty very much so. But Patty, it was in the in, in early 90s, late 80s, Patty was a drinker. Mm -hmm. And um, she was a dancer, you know, at a club, you know, uh, right. a stripper. So um, she was doing a lot of drugs. And I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I, I know. So... I wrote a song about that. I wrote a song called Maggie, your queen of a lie, uh, you know, um, tears in the night, because the thing is she, she, she was the queen of a lie. She, because when you do drugs, you first yeah. thing you do is you lie. So I did write a song about her. Uh, she knew it was her song. And unfortunately she passed away from uh, abuse. Uh, mm -hmm. so many, but uh, yeah, it was. as a songwriter, I think we all write a song. I mean, I should, I should speak for myself. I write a song, um, uh, for someone or because of someone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, um, I, I recently wrote a song for a movie um, called Imagine That. And uh, it's a very simple line. It's, it's in the, it, I looked around all my life and all I had to do is look into your eyes and I fell in love. And I realized love was just by looking in somebody's eyes. Sometimes you find someone and... It, it could be a co-worker, it could be whatever. And, and there's a, a moment where the two, the two uh, look at each other and you realize, you're like, oh my God, this is, the, this is the one. But that's what I wrote, very simple lyrics. All I had to do is look into your eyes. Mm -hmm. and, and I realized you were the, I found love. So imagine that. All I had to do is, you know, so the song came in a movie uh, in March. And it's mm -hmm. doing pretty well, yeah. That's great. And, and when you start to compose a song, yeah. how does it work for you? I've, I've, I've interviewed a number of different musicians and some people say the music comes first. Some people say a line comes first. Some people say the entire song comes to them in one big piece. And in 10 minutes, they're done writing it. Where do you fall on that, on that strange dichotomy of, <laughs> of, of writing songs? There's different uh, schools when it comes to that, David. Uh, the first one would be, uh, the Alton John, Bernie Taupin vibe, which is different. Bernie would write a, a lyric and give it to, hand it to, um, to Alton John, who immediately, as he's so brilliant, he would come up with music. Well, I can't do that. I, I tried. I, mm -hmm. I can't. I uh, usually, um, I, I get two ways of writing songs. I can walk in the streets or somewhere and I have an idea and I have a recorder with me all the time and boom, here comes a melody. 99% of the time, it's crap. <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, it's brilliant. No, it's not. It sucks. And then you <laughs> it's horrible. Anyway, so 99% uh, of the time. But the 1% of the time, you're like, it's not bad. So you work on it. Most of the time, I would say, I, I would pick up my guitar and strum a few chords. And then there's a melody that comes along. Then I would call one of my partners to say, hey, uh, what do you think of this one? And 
uh, if they like it, then we continue working on it. And uh, I usually come up with a title. That's one thing about me. I usually come up with the title of the song, uh, which makes it very easy for uh, my partner, whomever I'm writing songs with, mm -hmm. to continue uh, writing the song with me. Um, uh, like when I wrote the, the song of my first album, when a second album, When I Find Love, when I immediately, there was this title, When I Find Love, Let It Be You. Uh, Oh, that's a pretty good line. Boom, boom, boom. You know, and then my co-writer co co said, well, let's work on that. You know, uh, I tried to do the other way around. I wrote a song for, uh, where they had a disaster in 2018 in Japan. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, and I wrote a song for that, for, for to raise money for them, for Japan. And the co-writer I was working with was telling me, oh, no, no, we come up with, uh, we had guitars and everything and piano. He said, no, you need to um, come up with the lines first. And I was struggling. I was like, well, it's not the way I write. So I came up with some good lines, but that was a big struggle for me. And I don't want to do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Now, going through the, the history, uh, an abbreviated history of your music career, uh, you, you first came to the United States with, with XYZ, uh, and, and you did well with that for a while. But at some point... Uh, that band broke up. What was that breakup like? Um, and uh, is there any way to compare it to a breakup of a, of a human relationship? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can compare. I came to America in 1986, I believe. Um, I didn't speak English, actually. I, I came to the country uh, and um, 86, 85, 86, yeah. And I um, got jobs, odd jobs, you know, uh, I was a janitor. I was a driver. I was. Uh, I used to clean toilets. I used to do all kinds of jobs that were mm -hmm. disgusting to make money. And uh, uh, we were trying really hard to get a record deal. Uh, no, no one wanted to sign us. Of course, like typical story, you know, uh, mm -hmm. happened to everybody. Then we got signed. Um, we did very well, thank God. And um, Music, music changed. Uh, Nirvana came along in the early 90s and changed the entire uh, spectrum. And um, we were no longer re uh, relevant. Uh, promoters didn't want to hire us. So, yes, it does feel like a breakup. And I'll, because well, sometimes when you're, a, when you're in a relationship with someone, you want to be with that person and they don't want to be with you. So you feel rejected. Okay. Yeah. Well, the music scene was the same thing. I wanted to appear on stage. I wanted to, to perform, but promoters said, no, we, you're not relevant anymore. Uh, we're not going to give you your fee anymore. We're going to give you peanuts. Right. Uh, fans didn't come to the shows. Fans also turned their back on us. Uh, uh, we were not hip. So right. there was not just us. All the entire 80s music scene was dead, early 90s. All my buddies were working at gas station or, or whatever, you know, yeah. uh, everybody did what they could, everybody uh, to survive. And it's like a breakup because the person you, it's like when you're in love with somebody, you're married to somebody, there's two people, uh, the person doesn't want you anymore. Well, you keep asking why, why, what can I do to make it work? Why, you know, can we work it out, blah, blah, blah. And you know when it's over, it's over. Mm -hmm. The persons may grant you some time, said, okay, well, we can try one more time, you know, but in their hearts, you know, it's over. Yeah. They know it's over. Uh, well, the music scene was the same thing. We were completely rejected by uh, promoters, record company dumped us. I remember being on the road, being dumped like, like, I mean, like it was over, like an old pair of shoes. Oh, we don't want them anymore. Right. But we said, but we sold, we sold so much, so many albums. We, we, you made so much money because of us. Irrelevant. It, it's a weird thing because record companies, they really make a lot of money off bands. Let's face yeah. it, you know, um, uh, bands don't make a lot of money. Um, it's the fame, the idea of, of of being an artist and everything. So, if you only count on that, you're not going to make money. You got to be smart. Mm -hmm. um, so we uh, we all got dropped. All the bands of my era, Great White, uh, Poison, all the bands that sold 15, 20 million copies. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money for a record company, you know. When you see that they were selling the uh, 
the CDs, uh, you know, between eight ninety nine to fourteen ninety nine when they came out, and you you think twenty million album for some out from some bands, although they have expenses and everything, you think about it, the record company made millions, and yet they dump you like your yesterday's news. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing with a relationship. Your your wife, your spouse is gonna say it's over, and you ask yourself why. Can we work it out? And they say no. And that's life. You it's the same thing. The exact same same feeling. You feel rejected. You feel uh, remorseful. You 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 ask yourself, maybe I could do better. What can I change? Can I change my hair? It's over. Right. You mentioned Great White, and so I know uh, years after X Y Z got dropped, you went in, and now you're the you're the lead singer for <laughs> Great White. Um, my question is, how did that feel going into another band, uh, being the new guy in a band? I, I Years ago, I read a, 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 bio, a biography written yeah. by Sammy Hagar about him going into Van Halen, and I was right. fascinated by it. So I'm, I'm interested in hearing about it from you. It's a new run- It's interesting. Well, your comment is interesting. It's a new relationship. It's a new wife. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, Great White was my new wife. Uh, I, I, I was completely in the band. I was uh, dedicated to the band. My relationship was with the band and to the band uh, was a new wife. It's exactly the same thing. My habits, my uh, my phone calls were told the guys all the time. Uh, I didn't talk to XYZ anymore. Uh, uh, I mean, we were still friends because we liked each other. But the truth is, uh, Great White was my wife. I mean, per se, you know, I'm not trying to. Yeah. Uh, I established a relationship with the band, uh, the crew. I mean, the roadies, the sound guy, it's a small circle. So we were all together, just like you said. It's a, it was a new relationship, like, you know, you divorce or you lost someone. Well, guess what? You just met somebody else and you move on and you're with somebody else. So right. that's, yeah, I, it, it's interesting. I never thought of it. But yes, it was my, my new wife, in a way. Right. <laughs> right, and then and then and then I understand that you are back with X Y Z now. You're working with them again. Okay. I'm doing many many things. I realized that um, I, I worked with X Y Z to release an album, which hasn't came out yet because uh, we we disagree on on the the direction. Mm-hmm. We've changed. I've I've grown a certain way. They've grown a certain way, and oh. I. Uh, <clears throat> I disagree with the direction of the band. It's funny. It's just like a relationship. It's like, I disagree with your hair. I disagree with what you're saying. Uh, you've mm-hmm. gained weight or I've gained weight. You know what I mean? It's exactly the same thing. So music is very related to uh, <clears throat> to a relationship, uh, men and women. Absolutely. Um, I work with Great White, uh, XYZ, but as in, nothing has, fin- has been finalized yet. Uh, I'm working uh, on a... Latin album, I'm really sad. I'm releasing a Latin song in Spanish uh, in August. Um, and I'm also working for a company called Royal Caribbean, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the cruise line company. Mm-hmm. I'm one of the headliner for, uh, for that company. So I have a show with them. Uh, and I write music for film and TV. So right. I'm not stop. Yeah. You know, in fact, this afternoon, someone asked me if I could write uh, new songs for a movie. I said, yeah. Absolutely, I, I will uh, send me the script so I can get the idea of, of mm-hmm. what it's all about, and 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 I'll dig into the emotions. The truth is, I cannot write just to write. Uh, I refuse to do that if I don't relate to to something. Eh, no, no, I can't write. Sorry. Now, uh, and so, where can people find out more information about you and the music that you're putting out today? Where where do they go on the internet? Well, they go on the internet. My first and last name, which is Terry Ilous, I L O U S, and uh, of course Facebook, Instagram. You know, I'm always uh, on the on on the on social media. Social media has changed people for some reasons, uh, in a good way and a bad way. Uh, we were supposed to get closer, and yeah. for some reasons, I think it's the other way around. Uh, we we all. We're no longer connected. It's supposed to connect people, but I believe we're no longer connected. We, <clears throat> we, we, we don't communicate anymore. I see people with their phones and at having dinner with the kids and family, 
and everybody's on the phone, nobody's talking to each other, and yeah. it bothers me. And there's one rule at, at my house is you can't use your phone when we're having dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't even bother. Even my friends are my friends are using their phone. I'm like, hey, hey, I'm here. Mm-hmm. So um, social media is a good thing and a bad thing. Um, and the funny thing, you're talking relationship. Um, social media has changed the way a relationship happens because if you think about it, people now use dating apps. Right. So they want to date somebody. They go on match.com or, or whatever, you know, you name them. Um, and that's the way you meet somebody. Uh, mm, do I like that? Not really. I, I, when I was separated from, from my, my wife, I went on the apps like that. And it was terrible. Yeah. Because there was no... There was no there was no feeling. There was nothing. You just look at a photo and say, oh, I want to meet that person. And you meet, you go and it doesn't happen. For me, it didn't happen. It was yeah. a disaster. Uh, for some people, I mean, good for them, you know. But I think uh, I still believe in the old romance, dating somebody, uh, a co-worker or someone you meet uh, at a bar or someone uh, someone you have interaction, uh, uh, an emotion, a uh, uh, a, a glimpse, an, a, a look, something. Uh, for me, that's much more important than the, all those dating apps. But it seems to me like that's what people do these days. Uh, you know, even especially the young, younger generation, eighteen and twenty. Uh, I talked to some of my my daughter's friends. They, my daughter just graduated, so she's seventeen, eighteen, and those kids go through apps to meet other boyfriend girlfriend. Eventually, I'm like. Are you kidding me? Right. You. This is the way you're gonna meet your boyfriend. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's terrible. What happened to What happened to romance? I mean, I think romance is almost a thing of the past. I mean, I wouldn't say for everybody, mm-hmm. but for me, love is the strongest thing in the world um, that connects to people. Or people just. I mean, for a husband and wife, of course. Oh, husband, husband. I mean, I'm not going to get into that, but you know, <clears throat> um, love is an amazing feeling. Uh, it's still the number one feeling for me. Um, finding love is is the best thing in the world. There's no doubt about it. You know, uh, I see so many people at having dinner, and a wife and husband, and th- there's no love. I can see that. It's uh, there's no communication. They just it's a routine, and and that saddens me. Saddens me because they're wasting their lives. I I, I didn't. I, I saw my parents. My parents were in love till the end. Till the end, my parents were in love with each other. Mm-hmm. When my dad passed in two twenty of COVID, um, my sister was next to him. She was wearing the mask and everything. You know, the last his last words. To my sister, uh, my last words were, please take care of your mom. Mm-hmm. I says a lot. I'm like, wow, now my dad's a true love. And my dad, I grew up in a f- house where my dad used to buy flowers to my mom every other week. Or every right. week when the, f- the flowers were dead, my dad used to go to the market, the farmer's market, and bring my mom's flowers. We've always had flowers at home, although we were poor. We're not very rich at all, uh, unfortunately, but we were very low middle class. Um, but my father made sure that my mom was happy, was taken care of. Uh, uh, he, he did the best he could, and, and she did the best she could as well. It was uh, it was wonderful to see that. They were arguing like cats and dogs, of course, <laughs> but because they are French, so it's the way it is. <laughs> you know, the French, you know, they, they always have this vibe where, you tell them something, you know, fuck you, ah, fuck you. <laughs> so <laughs> they are, you know, they smoke a cigarette, fuck you, I, I, don't, I disagree with you, uh, you know, whatever, you know. That's the way they are. But in the end, there was those two together. And I believe that's the ultimate way. Um, when you find that special person, you're... You're no longer alone in this world, and you 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 have someone you can depend on, that she can depend on you, and 
and you can do the journey together. And I think it's, I think it's, it's great. It's the greatest. Love is the greatest feeling in the world. Well, you couldn't, you couldn't have summed up uh, our discussion in a better way than what you just did right there. It's uh, <laughs> just, just ex explaining about your parents and how powerful love is and the communication and being yeah. able to rely on each other. Really wonderful, wonderful advice for our audience members who might Thank be you. wondering what's next in life for them. That's what they should be looking for. Love. That what they should be looking for is love instead of being lonely and staying home and, 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 and watching TV, but politics, argument, everybody hates each other, divided and everything. I'm like, forget about it. You have somebody next to you who's a good person that loves you. You have your kids and everything. That's love. That's the most important thing in the world. All those politicians, all the whatever's happening in the world, <clears throat> it's not really going to affect you. What's going to affect you directly is the way you talk to your wife, the way she talks to you, your kids and everything. That is the most important thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Love. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And, uh, <laughs> I wish you luck in the rest of your journey uh, on you. the boat. I hope the seas are smooth and, uh, and the shows come <laughs> off great. Thank you, David. You take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.